The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Good Morning from Babes in Arms. Have you people got what I call a second helping family? A bunch of real He-Man eaters who always come back for more? <laughs> well, if you have, Jell-O is one mighty fine answer. For with Jell-O, you can always have plenty. First, because Jell-O is amazingly inexpensive. It costs only a few cents a package, and one package serves the average family generously. And second, Jell-O is so quick and easy to prepare, there's practically nothing to it. It dissolves instantly in hot water and sets quickly in your refrigerator. And Jell-O makes such swell desserts. It's a brand new hit every time. All six flavors are crammed with extra rich flavor. And that's put into Jell-O by a special process and sealed right in so it can't get out. It's a flavor so rich and full, tempting and delicious, that it tastes as refreshing as the real ripe fruit. Just be sure to get genuine Jell-O when you buy. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. Good morning, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the third time this season, we bring you our master of ceremonies, a man who smokes a cigar so short that it finally becomes an inlay, Jack Benny. Thank you. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that introduction was so cute, and you're so big that I just can't be mad at you. <laughs> It was very clever, Don, although a bit exaggerated. Well, Jack, you do smoke your cigars pretty short. I know, Don, but there's a reason for that. It just so happens that the cigars I smoke are very hard to get. They're made especially for me by a man in Tampa, Florida, a fella called Perfecto Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an excellent smoke. Are your cigars very expensive, Jackson? Well, they are, Phil. If you buy them individually, of course, you can order them by the box or by the gross and save money. How do you get them? Jack buys them by the yard and cuts them off. <laughs> now, Mary, that's not only silly, but unbelievable. Go on. You even send your old matches back to Sweden to be re-dipped. <laughs> Mary, the only matches I ever sent back to Sweden were those that didn't work. <laughs> Jeepers, nobody could be as tight as you make me out to be. Oh, no? Tell them what you did last week to little Dennis Day, our new singer. Mary, we've got a long play to do tonight. And now, folks... Come on, Mary, what happened? And now, folks... What about Dennis? Jack paid him his salary in silver dollars and then taught him how to stand on his head. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mary Livingston, you're just making that up. In the first place, I don't pay Dennis his salary. I give it to his mother. Who in turn gives it to Dennis Who in turn stands on his head Ha 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 Oh, that's top of them, Mary Phil, when we need a scorekeeper here, I'll let you know <laughs> Meanwhile, make like a mummy <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you may remember Last week we announced that tonight The Benny Livestock Company I mean the Benny Livestock Company <laughs> Uh, would present their version of Daryl F. Zanuck's production, Stanley and Livingston. Now, in our version, I will play the part of Mr. Stanley, the newspaper man, as portrayed on the screen by that sterling and inimitable actor, Spencer Tracy. Inimitable? Yes. What are you talking about? That guy's a great actor. <laughs> Phil, that was a compliment. Inimitable means that Spencer Tracy cannot be imitated or duplicated. Not tonight, anyway. <laughs> We'll see about that. Now, Mary, you're going to be my secretary, and Phil, for some unknown reason, you're going to be the editor of the newspaper. You know, my boss. Your boss, eh? Yes. Benny, you're fired. <laughs> Wait for the play. And Don, uh, Don, you're going to be a cannibal. A cannibal? Why, Jack, you promised me that I could be the editor. Gee, I have the headlines all set and everything. Yes, Don, I can just see the big red letters on your headlines. <laughs> 
Rain tomorrow, so go to your neighborhood grocer for Jell-O today. <laughs> we'll take care of that for you, Don. Now, uh, Dennis Day. Wait a minute, Jack. Dennis isn't here yet. He isn't? What's the matter with that kid anyway? I told his mother last week that he must be here on time. You know, Jack, I don't think Mrs. Day likes you very much. Oh, she doesn't? Huh. I should worry and get a wrinkle. Just worry about the ones you got. <laughs> what was that? What'd you say? I said, just worry about the ones you got. Oh, my wrinkle. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'll find out what's keeping that kid. Mary, get Mrs. Day on the telephone. It's Hollywood 2734. I'll tell her a thing or two, believe me. Operator, get me Hollywood 2734. She's been getting away with murder, and I'm not going to put up with her temperament any longer. What are you going to do, get off the program? <laughs> Phil, you better keep still. I'm mad at you clear through Christmas already. <laughs> And another thing. Hello? Who is this? Oh, Jack, it's Gladys. Hang up. I gave you the wrong number. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Day is Oxford 7071. Oh. Operator, get me Oxford 7071. Gee, I got a little mixed up there. Gladys, eh? Say, Jack, is that the tomato I saw you with on Vine Street the other night? Phil, she's going to have her teeth fixed, so no crack. <laughs> A darn nice kid. Hello. Just a minute, Mrs. Day. Here's your call, Jack. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Day. This is Jack Benny. Now, Mrs. Day, what about Dennis? We've been on the air 15 minutes and he's not here yet. What? He's been a bad boy and he can't come to the program. <laughs> but this is his job. I don't care if he won't eat his carrots. There must be other ways to punish him. But... I know Mrs. Day. I know Mrs. Day. I know Mrs. Day. Look, he knows Mrs. Day. Mary. <laughs> now, will you... Now, will you please... Now, will you please make an effort to get Dennis over here immediately? Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, just a minute, Mrs. Day, while we're on the subject. I've had just about enough of your meddling. I'm running this program. If you don't like it, you can stay away. All right, Jack. Take your finger off the hook. <laughs> Mary, I was just rehearsing what I'm going to say when she comes in. Now, everybody settle down. Come on, Phil, let's have a good number. How about Hollywood 2734? You know what I meant, Phil. <laughs> so hit it. Okay, Jackson. I can't understand Gladys being home. She told me she was going to Santa Barbara for the weekend. <laughs> Having any fun from George White's Candles, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, uh, pardon me, Jack. I just found this gold cigarette case under the piano. Does it belong to you, Phil? No, I don't carry one. Uh, let's see that, Don. I thought it might have dropped out of your pocket, Phil, while you were leading the band. No, no, it isn't mine. Uh, let's see that, Don. Is this your cigarette case, Mary? No, I don't smoke. Let's see that, Don. I'm sure it doesn't belong to any of the boys in the band. 
Of course not. Let's see that, Don. I know it isn't mine. Let me see that, Don, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> now, give me that cigarette case, and I'll, I'll hold it until the rightful owner claims it. But, Jack, I found it. I better hold it. Don, I'm responsible for anything that's found in this studio. So hand it over. Okay, Jack. Here you are. Thanks. And now, folks... He is beautiful, isn't he? <laughs> it's gold, all right. And now, folks, getting back to our play, Sammy and Livingston, we, uh... Smart looking, too. <laughs> Lovely. We have attempted something in a more legitimate vein. Now, in our version, as I said before, I'm going to play the part Come of... Come along, the... Dennis, and stop soaking. Here she is, folks. Tugboat Annie. <laughs> Well, good evening, Mrs. Day. I'm so glad you were able to get here. Really, it's very sweet of you. I'll have no sarcasm, young man. I had a perfectly good reason for keeping Dennis at home. He was a bad boy. But, Mother, I don't like Carrot. I don't blame you. Dennis, if you ever expect to be a great singer, you must eat your vegetables. Mrs. Day, for your information, Bing Crosby never ate a carrot in his life. And he's doing all right. Well, Crosby feeds carrots to his horses. Yes, and look at him. <laughs> they need is raw meat. Now, let's forget about carrots. Oh, Dennis. Yes, please? Uh, right after your song, we're going to do our play. And since you don't like vegetables, you're going to be a cannibal. Dennis is not going to be a cannibal. I'm sorry, Mrs. Day, but that's what he'll have to be. He's had no acting experience. What else can he do? I can stand on my head. Wait till Saturday. <laughs> anyway, Dennis, it's all settled. Oh, no, it isn't. He must have a more dignified talk. Oh, I suppose you'd like to have him play the lead. I suppose he can do a better job than I can. He's wide open, Mrs. Day. Give it to him. <laughs> Mary, she doesn't need any help from you. The old hag. What was that? I said, let's play tag. I feel young. Do you mind? <laughs> now, let's have no more interruptions, please. Uh, go ahead with your song, Dennis. Yes, Mr. Benny. Hold it a minute. Come in. Uh, will you pardon the interruption, Mr. Benny, but I was rehearsing in this studio today, and I believe I left my cigarette case here. Uh, did you happen to see it? Why, yes, a cigarette case was found. As a matter of fact, I have it in my pocket. Well, thanks. I'll just take it and run along. Oh, I'm sorry, but you'll have to identify it, Mr. Mr. Uh, Kaiser's the name. K. Kaiser. Oh, K. Kaiser. <laughs> well, K, it's good to see you there. Hi. Evening, folks. How are y'all? Well, I... I didn't recognize you when you came in. Say, who is this guy, anyway? Got a big hand. Phil, this is Kay Kaiser, the orchestra leader. Oh. You working around here, bub? <laughs> Phil, for heaven's sake, Kay Kaiser has his own radio program. And one of the greatest and most popular bands in the country. Well, thanks, Mr. Benny. Thanks very much. Oh, so you're in my racket, eh, Kaiser? Let me ask you something. How many pianos you got in your band? One. Well, take a look over there. I got two pianos. I got one good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, huh? Well, Kay, I'm really glad you dropped in to see me. I didn't drop in to see you. I just came back from a cigarette case. Oh. Well, as long as you're here, we might as well do a routine about it. Hmm? That's Jack, all right. Free talent, Benny. <laughs> Mary, I'm just trying to be a good host, that's all. Well, Kay, what are you doing out here in Hollywood? You generally broadcast from New York. Yes, but I came out here to make a picture for RKO uh, called uh, That's Right, You're Wrong. Oh, is that so? That's a swell title. You know, I made two pictures last year. <laughs> He's making one good one. <laughs> Mary, please. Well, Kay, how much longer are you going to stay in California? Well, we only have one more week out here, so I'd better take my cigarette case now. Oh. Well, look, Kay, I'll be glad to return the case to you, but I've got to be certain it's yours. Can you identify it? Why, certainly. There's a monogram on it. It says KK. What more do you want? Now, wait a minute. KK could stand for a lot of things. Chris Kringle or <laughs> Crazy Cat. Why, it could even stand for Phil Harris. Oh, you mean uh, Colonel Corn? That's it. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm afraid you'll have to identify the case a little better than that. Huh? Well, I don't know if I can. I just got it yesterday for a present. Well, maybe I can help you. Can you stand a quiz? Why, sure, sir. Shoot the sizzling, sibling sticklers, and I'll endeavor to circumvent the seriousness of the situation I'm in. Oh. Well, that took up two minutes, right there. <laughs> well, all right, Kay, let's go. Now, our first question comes from Mr. Jack Benny of Beverly Hills, California. Mr. Benny would like to know what metal your cigarette case is made of. Well, it's, uh, uh, it's, Now, uh, listen, Kay, here's a clue. When the blue of the night meets the what of the day. <laughs> Da-dum, da-dum, <laughs> D. Gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Bill, keep out of this. Have you got it, Kay? Well, uh, would you give it to me just once more? Yeah, look. When the blue of the night mm -hmm. meets the g g g g g of the day. Yeah, yeah. g g g g Yeah, yeah, Come on, yeah. Kay. G -g 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 -g. Yeah, yeah. Students! Silver! That's wrong! <laughs> Let's go. Now, Kay, I'll give you another chance. What's inside the case? Cigarettes. Correct. And what kind of cigarettes are they? Now, uh, let's see. I, I should know cigarettes. Well, Kay, here's a clue. You are my la la. Uh -huh. <laughs> you are my what what star Lucky Lucky what Lucky strikes and thanks for the plug <laughs> That's well Kay And here you are You win Here are your cigarettes Well what about the case You don't get that You missed the word gold <laughs> You didn't say gold Well I tried to But you had your hand over my mouth <laughs> Oh And now ladies and gentlemen Dennis Day will sing Jack I'm not leaving here till I get my cigarette case. You'll have to see me later, Kay. Pull up a chair and watch our show. What are you going to sing, Dennis? I'm going to sing... Dennis is going to sing South of the Border. And if you don't mind, I'd like to have Mr. Kaiser conduct the orchestra. I'll be glad to. Fine. If he picks up that stick, I'll phone the union. <laughs> oh, Phil, don't be such a baby. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis Day singing South of the Border, and very good, Dennis. Thank you. Now, we're going to do our play now, so take your clothes off and put this ring in your nose. Okay. Mr. Benny, I told you Dennis is not going to be a cannibal. All right, then I'll make him my native guide. That's a cannibal who went to college. Are you satisfied? 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction, Stanley and Livingston. The opening scene is the editorial office of the New York Herald, where we find Jack Stanley, star reporter, and his secretary, Miss Mary Latouche. Latouche? I quit. Mary, we don't want to confuse your name with Dr. Livingston. Come on, come on, let's start the show. I want to get on you, Benny. <laughs> Well, just because you're my boss in the play, don't let it throw you. We now take you to the office of the New York Herald. Curtain. Music. Hello, New York Herald. Miss Latour speaking. I hate that name. Mary. <laughs> What's that? Yes? 9.30? All right, I'll tell him. Who was that? Gladys. Oh. <laughs> She wants you to bring some white rock. <laughs> okay. Now, don't bother me for the next half hour, Miss Latouche. I'm writing a story about Dr. Livingston. Is that the explorer that's lost in Africa? Yes, and the boss wants me to go look for him. He thinks it'll be a great scoop for the paper. Here comes the boss now. Where is he? Where is that star reporter? Let me at him. Hmm, look at him. Hello, Chief. Oh, there you are. Now, see here, Stanley. I've been looking over that story you turned in yesterday, and it's the worst lot of junk I ever heard. Well, I thought it was pretty good, Chief. Good? Why, that stuff was turbulent, stagnant, abominable. You're showing off now. Last week, you didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. You either go out and get some hot news or resignate. <laughs> resignate? I knew he'd slip. Well, look, Chief, I'm trying to get all the news I can. Well, you can't sit here and wait for it. You gotta go out and dig, dig, dig. Chop, chop, chop. Well, all right. <laughs> I'm doing my best, Chief. And another thing, Stanley. I gave you an assignment two weeks ago. I told you to go to Africa and find Dr. Livingston. Well, I'm waiting for my laundry to come back. He sends it to Waukegan. I do not. Now, listen, Stanley. You better find Livingston or you're fired. You hear? Fired. Okay, Chief. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, boy, was that fun. <laughs> the last time I'll work for him as long as he works for me. Well, so long, Miss Latouche. It looks like I gotta go to Africa. I'm off to the jungle. Wait a minute, I'm going with you. Oh, what could you do there? You need a straight man, don't you? That's right. Well, come along, gal. We might as well leave right now. We'll find Dr. Livingston, or my name ain't Jack Stanley. <laughs> Six months later, the Stanley Expedition has reached Africa and have started their long trek into the jungle. As we pick them up, we find Mr. Stanley with his native guide, Zombie. That's you, Dennis. Who is accompanied by his mother. Oh, fine. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. Africa, the jungle. Gee, it's hot. Four months trekking through the jungle and still no trace of Dr. Livingston. Miss Latouche, what do you got your finger up in the air for? I'm trekking, too. Hmm. <laughs> now, stick close to me. We're in constant danger. I wonder where we are. Wait. I'll ask my native guide. Hey, zombie. Yes, please? Hmm. <laughs> How far are we from Tanyanika? Me think got him walk six more miles. Dennis, watch your language. Mrs. Day, he's a native. He's supposed to talk like that. Oh. Lead the way, zombie. Just about enough of this jungle. Nothing but swamps and wild animals and those awful tsetse flies. I wish they'd stay off my glasses. <laughs> oh, well. It won't be long now. Oh, Jack. Jack, watch out. What's the matter? Look what's in front of you. Look. Good heavens. Look out, Mrs. Day. There's a boa constrictor right in front of you. Well, let it get out of my way. Don't think it won't. <laughs> Let's all be careful and stick close together. We gotta watch out for cannibals. Come on, zombie, lead the way. Six hours later, our little group of explorers is approaching the village of Tanyanika. It's a wild and desolate country. Will they find Dr. Livingston? We shall see. Hey, zombie, are we near Tanyanika? Yes, master, plenty soon. Good, this may be the moment we've been waiting for. Oh, Jack, look, look at that sign on the tree. Where? Right there, it says Wilshire Bowl, 9,000 miles. <laughs> I must make a note of that. The boss will give me a raise. Hey, wait a minute. 
See that hut over there in the clearing? Look, master. White man, white man. You're right, zombie. Where are you going, Jack? I'm going over and talk to him. That might be Livingston. Pardon me, sir. Are you Dr. Livingston? No, I'm young Dr. Kildare. <laughs> Dr. Kildare, what are you doing in Tanyanika? We're having a sneak preview of my latest picture. <laughs> oh, have they got a theater here in the jungle? Yes, there it is. Oh, yes. Well, I'll be darned. Jack, look what's coming next week. What? Mad About Town, starring Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I got a fine chance here. Oh, well, so long, Doctor. So long. Lead the way, zombie. We must find Livingston. Three weeks later, the Stanley Expedition, tired and weary, have now reached the little village of Zambezi. Will they find Dr. Livingston? No! Well, there's no use stopping here. <laughs> Come on, kids. We must find Livingston! Two years later, and our brave little band of explorers, after many hardships and privations, have now reached the little village of Tanyanika. Tanyanika? We were here two years ago. What's the matter with you, zombie? Don't blame Dennis. Well, he's our guide, isn't he? Dennis is doing the best he can. Mrs. Day, my nerves are shattered. I'm at my rope's end. We're out in the jungle. Uh, 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 uh. Take it easy. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to give up. Our expedition is a failure. Listen, do you hear that? What is that, zombie? Ujiji tribe. Very bad cannibals. Cannibals? Don't worry, Miss Latouche. I'll talk to these Ujijis in their native tongue. Here they come now. Gee, they look fierce. Yeah, look at their leader. Are those teeth? It ain't a grand piano. <laughs> now, all of you stay here. I'll go ahead and talk to them. I'll stop this. Kuba Zan! Hoka. Hoka. Me, Hoka, Kua, Rani, Keeley... Poka, Dr. Livingston? Gooba, all me no jello. Straba, rasba, chera, orange, lemon, and lime. Gooba! <laughs> now look, Chief. Master him, no, Chief. This man, Chief. Oh, well, I'll talk to him. Hey, Chief. Me, Hoka, Kua, Ronnie, Keela, Poka, Dr. Livingston? No, Hoka, Kua, Ronnie! Hmm, he's pretty mad. It's lucky I brought some trinkets with me. Here, Chief. Here's a string of beads for you. Gooba beads? Me, Puka, Bamba, Hoka... Cigarette case! <laughs> Cigarette case? Gazooks, it's K. Kaiser. Let me out of here. Oh, no, you don't. Student! Go on, Professor! Yes, grab him. <laughs> all right, all right, call him off. Here's your cigarette case. I wasn't going to keep it anyway. Thanks, Jack. So long, everybody. With all the cannibals in Africa, I had to meet him. Oh, well, play, Phil. Everybody likes to save money when they can, and here's news about some delicious new desserts that are economical, easy to make, and swell tasty. They're the new Jell-O puddings, vanilla, chocolate, and butterscotch. And are they grand? Smooth as satin, rich and creamy, with a flavor, a texture, a taste, that's every bit as perfect as the old-fashioned kind. But Jell-O puddings cost you only a few cents and take far less time and trouble to make. Each package serves four to six people. You'll say it's kitchen magic. Or all you do is add milk, then cook and stir till the mixture is creamy and smooth. That takes only a few minutes and you have a swell dessert. Vanilla pudding, delicate and inviting. Chocolate pudding, rich and dark and real chocolatey. Butterscotch pudding with a mellow golden color and a true butterscotch flavor, the good old-fashioned kind. So try all three new Jell-O puddings. The best way is to buy three packages at a time. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O vanilla, butterscotch, and chocolate pudding. We're a little late, so good night, folks. Hey, please, help, help. Oh! This is the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>